So what we're going to do now is this is version 2 of the Phil Tutorial 101. This one is the part in which we're going to have the description about personal islands and how to make a lot of silver, not necessarily getting yourself risk and, and stuff, but also even if you do risk, you can get yourself back together if you lose your gear currently. Fairly easy because you're going to make more than you're going to lose in general. Unless you're like unlucky and lose a lot. And also about the laborers because laborers is something very confusing and not a lot of people know how to deal with them. So to start the, the island scenario, the best idea for you right now would be to make the island, and this is my personal opinion, in Kalyan. Kalyan is the center hub for the world right now. There is an update that's coming out in June, which is the next season update. It's going to bring the patch called Merlin. And this patch called Merlin, what it's going to do is going to revamp the entire little surrounding places called like Limhurst Bridge Watch, Martlock, and Thetford and Fort Sterling. But as I know, what they're going to do is they're going to make so, for instance, the leather is, is the main resource on the steps, also known as desert. And Bridge Watch will have a special bonus if you refine the leather here, which is going to be extremely nice for the gathering scenario but this doesn't mean you have to make your island over here having the island in bridge watch is not much of a deal plus traveling from Kalin to bridge watch is fairly what one two three zones and an underpath the underpath if you're there you're basically in Kalin. it's really really difficult for you to be ganked when you're in the underpath and another thing Having the having it in Kalia means you can do gathering in all parts of the place with no issue whatsoever. So I would say Kalia is still the best idea for you to create the island. Reason why you have to create it here or not have, but it would be a good idea is is put it this way: the hub that takes you to the outlands and the marketplace is fairly cheaper because there's not much content on the surrounding cities. Um, to create the island, you've got to go. Well, let me get into Kalia. You've got to go into a tiny little guy called the island vendor and you can see him on the mini map and it technically shows as a little coconut palm tree scenario with a little island and he's called the island merchant he looks like a freaking dude with an eye patch but there's a lot of people here so you won't be able to see it until people disappear but the guy is really behind this dude here and it's it looks like that he's literally a pirate go over here uh, buy your island if you did make the mistake in which you purchase the island somewhere else the only thing you lose for instance if you remove and demolish everything you have and put it in the bank of the city it, the only thing you'll lose is the expansions of the island if you abandon it and recreate it in Kalian which can be costly uh, but also like this is the last expansion the last expansion costs a million two hundred fifty you know silver thousand silver so it's like it's, it's a lot of silver, but you can make this easily having a tier 4 island. You make this in, what, 24 days, constantly farming it. And that's one of the other things. So once you created it, you can also check to see how the guild level of your guild is and where it is located, because it can be located in here, but it will stay on the top and other places. And you can see who granted you access to islands. So once you go inside, the main purpose of the island is for you to have a house in the middle if you'd like or other buildings because you can literally make as I did uh, butcher or cook but I'd suggest only the butcher don't make a cook and don't make any usable places because you're not gonna get the bonus of a red zone another reason why it's really good for you to do your island in Kalian is to use the bonus of the red zone which has a resource return uh, higher than uh, the other zones aside from black zones which is like 3% more or 5% more something like that then at the back of your island from level 2 and above level 2 island you get one plot level 3 you get two plots uh, level 4 you get three plots and level 5 you get you know you, you understand it's basically you get a plot of farm minus uh, like the level so if you have a level 6 island you have 5 plots so that way hopefully you guys understood and what you do is you plant your stuff basically suggestion is carrots carrots is extremely useful to get yourself lots of silver reason is it's the main used resource uh, or food scenario to feed animals that take 
vegetables or animals that will become food like chicken will become meat to become food for the higher ones that only eat meat and so one carrot necessarily one carrot patch and every single farm has a total of nine one carrot patch can yield you on your island without watering the watering is only for seed purposes without watering this can yield you from four uh, no from six carrots to 14 carrots and if you do get lucky and get 14 on all of them that's a massive profit not only that but each carrot is around 200 to 200 or more silver each carrot so per plot you if you average that you make 10 carrots each single little plot a patch of carrot so per plot you have 90 you multiply that by 200 and you've got yourself nearly 18,000 on a single plot right or am I wrong or is it 1,800 I need a calculator <laughs> but basically you, you get what I mean you you get yourself a nice amount yeah 18,000 per plot so 18,000 silver per single plot of you know carrots um, you've got like on three farms if I could make I made a fourth farm on the four far, uh, four little farms you have got yourself a steady a hundred well I'm not gonna put a hundred K but like on those four you'll have 18 times four which is a nice amount of some is like 64,000 right yeah 64,000 that's on one island if you purchase islands on your like your alts as I have myself I have flows area as my secondary alt at uh, my second alt and then I have a third cherry uh, third alt so I've got my main and two alts and I'm saying third alt but it's not really and this is a level 3 island which is well, level 4 island which is fairly cheap it's it costs less than 500k silver to make it I think the first island is really cheap once you made yourself you can always water and nurture the pets and like whatever you're doing here like either be animals or something but always make sure that if you want to have a nice amount of profit you can do it with carrots at the beginning and you can grow yourself to be able to on the destiny board for instance to farm corn pumpkin and other seeds suggestion is try either I don't necessarily like potato seeds I like the corn seeds a lot and I like the pumpkin seeds there are people that like to use the focus and they constantly constantly produce wheat uh, wheat is another seed that you'll have it's a level 3 seed the difference between the seeds go like this a lower tier seed will yield for instance carrots will yield absolutely no regular base seed when you do this kind of plant them but when you water them they yield 200% of the seed therefore you're gonna have two seeds from one single plot the carrots are good for this mostly every other type of, of, of like seed or, or food thing on the, on the farming scenario actually is sold by the same amount so they all produce any seed produces from 6 to 14 per single patch and the only reason you do carrots is that you can literally water half of them and you're gonna have seeds for the other half it's a hundred percent chance that you're gonna get two seeds if you water that and the watering bonus is not even that that great it starts at a thousand focus once you level yourself up this at level 100 makes every single seed cost 500 focus so it already cuts in half the focus usage and if you even get yourself this to max you're gonna use a hundred focus so it's 400 less when you get a specialization for every single type of seed uh, doing carrots is really good for that doing corn on the other hand the seeds for corn produce a already 91.11 percent return on seed with it planted without watering meaning that if you can reach this level and you don't want to constantly use your focus on seeds you can always make sure you like water a couple get a nice amount back and then stop watering and then continue doing it as I normally do so to water just simple click on it bum doom done and everything else the pro projected seed yield is 200% now it's zero because it's not watered I'm not gonna waste my focus on that because I've got actually a lot of you know seeds and if you would like some seeds as well feel free to you know hit me up in game or find me up when I'm alive on twitch and I'm more than happy to give you some seeds because they are expensive 
Like, one single seed of carrot is a thousand silver. So if you want to make profit, you can always sell the seeds. And the marketplace people, a lot of people buy, buy them. Preferably the higher levels. So like, for instance, corn or like potato, cabbages, and all kinds of stuff. You can also do, on the other hand, the production of herbs, which is used to make the potions. It's another really interesting thing because if you make the potions yourself, you can technically use focus to maintain getting a seed yield, and then you can get yourself a nice amount of focus to use when you have a lot of these resources, and then you use focus to produce the potions, and then that means you're gonna have a nice return of these these things what I'm saying about the return I'm gonna show you in a second um, I might just grab myself I don't know um, I don't know let's go with 80 that works with 80 cabbages uh, I can demonstrate this here is it a tier 3 yeah so it's a tier 3 I can't produce it here but you will understand soon once I reach here when you're gonna use the focus this is a cook that is on a freaking literally empty blue zone you can see on the bottom right your island is a blue zone so when you're gonna do like carrot soups there's no return rate normally when you click focus it always adds up a 35% boost this 35% boost it doesn't surpass on the black zones it doesn't surpass 50% on the black zones the max you can reach it is 38% but it just means Literally, you're getting a 48% return on the black zone, but the red zones, on the other hand, is 45. So it's a 3% difference. And the city of Kalian is considered to be a red zone. Although there's no PK or anything because it's a city, the, the, the little plots inside it precisely can produce, it can give you back. So the little workers that you have over here, the little towers that you can see mounted everywhere you just have to make sure that if you want to do something like I'm gonna do food I can check out and be oh this is a public one I can access it what's the usage fee does it have food yes it has nutrition okay 96% food also has a usage fee of 50 mm, I might go to nah, that sometimes people put like that one that's 39% and as far as hell it's like I'm, I'm gonna go for that one definitely just checking all of them it's like it's really really low some people as well put 100% which are like literally not trying to compete at all. So I reached the cook. Oh cool, I can do everything I want on the cook. But I need to make sure I have the level. So I want to make cabbage soup. Uh, unfortunately it uses 144 to make. But this is the silver cost to make one batch. This is the resource return without using focus. If I click to use focus, 45%. It's like the increase is you know drastic and the reason why is like you're not producing one cabbage soup just to say some items produce more than one uh, this probably will produce 10 cabbage soups if I'm not mistaken but from the 144 the 45% is literally I can if I had 288 I might be able to produce another I might be able to produce with more I might be able to constantly keep producing more using the focus and it's fairly easy to level, especially food, it's fairly easy to level. Like, I'm at 52 food, and honestly, I don't cook. My character only butchers. As you can see, I have eight, 19 level of butchery, nothing here, aside maybe from carrot soup, I've made that, but the focus cost decreases once you reach this to the max. And then it decreases even further if you reach one of these to the max, meaning you can you can make even more using less focus put it this way even more and if you do have a guild that has an isle uh, like a city on the blacklands on the black zones which is like great we do we do have one uh, if you literally go inside you can see that they have one right here they put a very low usage fee and I can literally come over here and just use it and do it do it over there it's it's great but I risk myself moving back from this territory with an ox or with wherever I am through the black zone, which I lost it, sorry, through the black zone, one territory and another one to reach a portal. 
although the risk is not that high. If I do get met by someone, oxes are slow and I can easily get myself ganked. So per se this is one of the reasons why I would say create your island in Kalian. Even if you do need like, oh I want to do some gathering, the new Merlin patch is out and I can have a lot of cool stuff on leather here or I can have a lot of stone on this scenario or a lot of fiber over here, a lot of ore on this one, a lot of wood on the forest and refine over here with a nice boost bonus thing. You can always go there and do all of the things. There is a bank on every single city so you can deposit on the bank on the city and if you do need to have an extra slot or something over here you can always get yourself um, make yourself a guild with an alt character and make the guild island over there so this is one of the things uh, as per gathering it, gathering is the best profession for you to earn silver so it's very good money making we have a uh, uh, suddenly summer fishing is extremely profitable more precisely, one of the reasons fishing is profitable is if you get yourself to tier 6 fishing, literally if you get yourself to level 30 fishing, tier 6, you will stop being able to fish tier 7. And if you get yourself to tier 7 fishing, you can fish the tier 7 specials, if I am not mistaken. I don't know if it's required. Wait. No, it's not. So tier 6 fishing is already enough for you to get the special fish, which I'm going to go into the marketplace and show you the price of one tier 7 special fish, and you're going to literally go crazy. I, I would too. I'm trying to fish. I'm just really lazy to fish. Um, fishing gets you special fish. Uh, where do I need consumables? Fish tier 6. This is a regular tier 6 fish. Shit, not really useful not even useful at all. Tier 7, ah, okay, a thousand each one. Well, let's put a special one, crab. There you go, that's a special tier 7 fish. This is a tier 7 fish, you sell one for 50,000. How do you know you get a special tier 7 fish? Well, there are lots of ways to do so. Uh, for fishing, you can boost your fishing scenario by eating the fish that you've just caught. It will give you the same amount that having fished that fish will. And you can get any tier of fish, well not any tier, but you can get lots of cool tiers of fish based on the tier of the actual place. You see 4 to 6. I will get tiers 4 to 6 fish here. More precisely, this is a 6 place, I will get more tier 6. From the specials. Um, this is a really bad zone to demonstrate as it's on the top left corner you're gonna see little fish ponds and such but this is a red zone I literally just exited the portal I am next to the fishing area I'm looking for fish I don't see any but you can fish anywhere you can fish here you can fish on that tiny little fish down there you can see that fish that fish that's a single fish that single fish is a special fish not really a special fish, but it's a 75% bonus for you to catch a special fish from that one. Same thing, that cardoom of fish, or that quantity of fish right there, really barely visible. It will give you, a, I think, a 25-50% to 50 increase for each one of those to be a special fish. And all they do is, they work the same principle as having bait. They increase your fishing speed of the fishing actually biting the line and a lot meaning you, you throw it there one two seconds later it's gonna be already biting it and you can just pull it back um, what I can describe from other cool scenarios uh, as we finish out with the island is the, the island serves the purpose of having those on the back right the farms I mentioned with a steady steady like tier I say tier 4, but level 4 farm uh, island, you're going to have 3 farm plots. The 3 farm plots, if you make them carrots, for instance, if you make them some sort of food, and you sell the food together, you can even put it a bit higher. If you sell the food, in about 18 days, you will be able to purchase freaking enough gold or purchase yourself the one month. 18 days you're able to get yourself the one month back 
So, in one island, you get enough silver just by selling the food to produce yourself the extra one month of premium on this character. And then for the rest of the month, so the 12 other days, or a bit more and a bit less depending on the month, um, you get yourself extra silver, which you can put to a secondary character or something, and you can do that. Or you can do it as, as I did, and I got myself, aside from doing this, which takes like around, what, half an hour of my day to do these farms, and I get myself enough uh, <laughs> in 18 days to produce my, my premium, I went overboard and I bought myself the 12 months. You can see over here, it has 361 days left from when I'm creating this now, which is, you know, 22nd of May. And as we're done with this, I'm gonna go into the worker scenario. All of these books are confusing as hell, I know, sorry for that. Um, but, wait, that's the wrong one, let me just deposit it back. What the books do is, first you've got the general list book. The general list book means any fame you get from any sort of scenario. I like to have general list books for farming purposes because there is no book specifically for gen for, for farming. So when you're going on the back to, to gather your farm, I always take these books with me. This is an open general list. That's the regular general list. And this is when they're full. I only do this for the reason that once I fill them, if I ever need to level up a worker, I can chuck the, these books at them and they will level up, they'll work on this. Hey Devin TR, how's it going man? So continuing on this scenario, you would take these books if you want to level up the generalist scenario, but only do it when fame is not going to be used in any other scenario. scenario. For instance, if you're doing gathering, make sure you have a freaking gathering book for the specific profession you're doing. Preferably tier 4 and above you must do this because and this is gonna be very interesting I'm gonna take this book with me and I'm also gonna take this tiny book with me and you're gonna see the difference I'm also gonna take this book with me and I need this tier 5 so I'm gonna go into one of my workers and the workers as they level up they go from a little bag to these wardrobes which can go blue I think at max tier which is 8 but the worker needs to be happy to be able to use like the books necessarily and produce stuff. I will demonstrate this better and this is one of the reasons why you have trophies. Trophies like the mercenary trophy which is a specialized for the mercenary. You've got only the gamekeeper for leather, the mercenary for mercenaries which just bring back silver and you've got the regular average one which is this generalist book which is the little thing that I've done these generalist trophies book so let's go into these three guys over here which I have on another house this is a tier 5 house by the way I make a tier 5 but preferably the optimal scenario would you would be for you to have a tier 6 so every single tier 5 book that you put can produce a hundred and fifty percent chance of giving more stuff back uh, you're gonna understand this in a second but tier 5 is the minimum level that you would like your house any house to be or any guild hall to be reason you get a max of three laborers as a tier 4 house you only get two laborers so you want to maximize and have the three laborers inside then you want to have a table which has to be the same level of the house or below preferably the same level as is good so this one produces 250 happiness for a max of six laborers, I know it's useless because you've got six laborers, you can only have three, but this is useful for when you have a guild hall. I'll show that in a bit. So, these three workers over here, let me just unmount for my man little horse. They are literally over here. I haven't put them to work, but I'm gonna do that now. This is a mercenary. That's a mercenary. They look very floppy and flamboyant with the poofy jackets and a massive, like, sword on the back and whatever bring and dine they're using. This guy just finished working for me. He is on a tier 5 mercenary journal. This journal is not the trophy that produces these banners on the side that you can see over here. Like expert mercenary trophy. So you've got to discern yourself in doing this. The cool thing about the mercenary journal is every time you kill any mob, if it's on the same tier of the book, it will get the fame into it. And it's any mob honestly and it's not that difficult 4,000 fame this is in fame 
Doesn't count the premium fame though, so make sure it's only on the left side of the fame, doesn't count the, the premium on the right. So, I kill something gives me 100, 100 fame plus 50 premium, it will add 100 to this, not the 50. And like, I can literally do this, I literally have 189 freaky mercenary journals tier 5 done. So, this mercenary takes 22 hours to get back, you're gonna see it now. I'm taking that book back, so the book is never lost. It just resets and I have to redo it, so refill it. All of the books never get lost. Uh, unless you sell them or get ganked or like lose your books or just trash them, which you can just chuck them on the side like and do this and yeah, destroy it. But they don't get lost, put it this way, they don't get lost. Unless you die, they can get trashed. But it's really rare for you to die in this game with books because it makes no sense. You won't have books to, you know, PvP. So. The reason we want to do the generalist trophies and such is so you can level up the mercenaries or level up the laborers. So when you go into the laborer, you can ask, you can buy the journals. They normally start only showing you these three. They are a little bit of silver investment that you put. You will buy the normal journal of the mercenary to produce silver. You will buy the, the generalist trophy to produce the trophy on the left, which has the, these little floating books. And the mercenaries trophy, which is a unique book to mercenaries that produce that one. The generalist thing on the left, which is these things, they produce 5 happiness to up to 3 of any laborers. So any laborers, any laborers up to 3. This is a general, any of those laborers will be benefiting. They don't stack, so you can't put the same tier 5. You have to put a tier 5, a tier 4, a tier 3, a tier 2, and like a different tiers. But they do stack with these ones. The mercenaries and the generalists stack. Same thing goes for the gamekeeper. So, you level them up, the books do cost a lot when it's like higher tier, especially tier 5, but you can always find them maybe cheaper than this on the freaking marketplaces because people don't buy them, just make sure, or, or don't sell them properly, or gave up on doing them. Just make sure you're not getting a trophy instead of the actual one that you want, which is the non-trophy version. Um, you can manage the freaking little laborer. What he does from managing is it shows you the happiness he has plus the bar on the top. For a labor to do 150%, you want them all to have a tier 6, everything around them, to do this. And you want him to be a tier 6. So this is what's gonna happen. Um, what you're gonna do now, as well, is on this managing scenario, is you can access the rights of the laborer, and mean other people can use this laborer, or people who have access to the house can use this labor on private um, or on custom for instance. Custom, you would add another co-owner which can modify like move him or do other stuff but honestly user is more than enough. The thing is I have this one set on private and you can move the laborer regardless. You see him here, I want to move him, he is bothering me, move him, that's it, moved. I want to move him, I want to put him back on the place he was, move him, done. So it's so easy to move these guys around, it doesn't make a difference. The wardrobe is the only place you can't traverse or go walk through, which is easy. You've got the books, you're gonna put them to work. Hit shift if you want, or just drag and drop, but shift left click, we'll put it there. Some of the tooltips are a bit incorrect when it shows over here, the likely return. This guy is gonna produce with 130%, right? This 130% means that 100% he's gonna produce 2,000 is 6 silver as it produces, uh, this, this guy's not producing that, but he's gonna produce a same amount every time. The extra percent means he will double that amount. This tooltip is wrong, it's supposed to be 2,006. When he produces double, it gets back to be 4,012. And he takes 22 hours to do this, same thing as the farms, is a 22 hours thing, you plant, you water, leave it for 22 hours, don't even water and leave it for 22 hours, as from planted. So I'm accepting, he goes on a journey, well, he disappears, and no one else, aside from you, can take the reward from this guy. Your, your personal character is the only one that can take the reward back, and they're on a job for you. No one can put this guy to work as well, it's secluded for you. So, this is another cool feature, if you have a guild hall and you would like to use it, I honestly wouldn't mind you using some of my workers as well if you would like to learn and such. So same thing, this guy is a tier 4, he will become maybe tier 5, 
he is missing a tiny little bit of XP or fame in that top to become a tier 5. So unfortunately, I cannot put a tier 5. There's no dragging and dropping here. I've got to go back and pick a proper tier, either 4 or below for him to work on. The lady on the back is a fisherman. As you can see, the journals don't have a fisherman trophy. You know, there's no fisherman's trophy. Fisherman's trophy don't exist. Uh, so she is also not going to have the same amount of like, she is a tier 5, same as the laborer that I sent. She's not going to have the extra 60 here because these produce 40 happiness. And she is not going to have that because she can't benefit from those. She will benefit from just the generalists on the left, which produce a little bit. Yep. So now I'm going to send her. She just produced a generalist trophy back to me. She gave me one ancient sculpture, which is that tiny little book. Done that. I want to send her again. I forgot to bring... No, I've got generalists. There you go, this is a tier 5 on a tier 5 worker, which doesn't have anything tier 6, but everything is up to tier 5, which is the same level, the same tier as her, meaning she can only benefit from the same tier of things on the house. If she is higher tier, she will benefit from anything below. Um, it doesn't mean, and this is one of the things, if she becomes tier 6, 7, 8, 9, the, the, this bar is going to decrease because she is going to want more happiness, but this level of 110% won't change. It's always going to be 110% for tier 5. For tier 6, it's going to be lower because this is not a tier 6 house. She's not going to be happy. So there's that. She has 10% chance of producing 2, 100% chance of producing 1, 22 hours. Just leveling her. Go. Do your thing. There she goes. 22 hours later, she can come back. Um, I should have probably placed the fishing one on her, which I have and I forgot. Anyways, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be going into, like, I literally just got these books and I like to organize them a little bit, but there we go. Um, I tend to level up generalist trophy from the lowest to the highest. And so I've just produced that, depositing it here. I'm gonna take these two books, as I mentioned, I need to take this or this, one of these things. Put the other guy over there, or this as well, let's take these. So I'm gonna show how does it work right now. Uh, I've got a, the other island, Flozeri's island. Flozeri has three workers that I constantly use over here. She has the gamekeepers, which are the leather workers. This is a tier 6 house. As you can see, tier 6 doesn't influence this. Laborers can remain at that. This is a freaking tier 2 house over here, if I'm not mistaken. Or it's not. Yeah, this is a tier 2 house. Looks like a tent. It's a tent of shit. One laborer, right? That is a tier 4 on the left. You're gonna see the tier 4 house. Don't have five. Uh, three laborers only have two. So there's that. Uh, Devin, what armor type should I use as a DPS? You can use cloth, you can use leather. But cloth normally is what people use as a DPS, as it boosts a lot of your like... Even the lower tier cloth, the tier 3, gives a 40% physical and magic attack bonus. What, but it can give up to a max of 55 or 50% 50, 50 I think. Yeah, a max of 50% increase on your damage. While leather, on the other hand, gives you a max, where is it? of 30. 30% 30 is the max on leather. So there is that. Uh, from 20 to 30% increase. So those two. Right, so I got myself here. You can see the trophies for the gamekeeper is like uh, little stuffed heads of what you hunt on the wild. This guy is not the gamekeeper. This is a stone cutter. I just have him here so I can have a stone cutter for my own usage. He is a tier 5. He has 250, 250, 25 because this goes up to tier 6. If I do put a tier 5 book, he would eventually produce 150%, which is max they can produce back. But I don't. And he also is not tier 6 yet. So he's only tier 5. I'm going to put tier 2, and he is going to have the 150% back. On resources, most important thing, which is why you should always have the resource book with you if you're gathering they produce the resource back. Not only this, but they produce this resource back, and if it's from tier 4 and above, has a chance 
like I'm putting this guy to work you're gonna see it right now this is a tier 4 gamekeeper tier 4 gamekeeper tier 5 gamekeeper as you can see I can possibly level this guy up on the other character might do so but as you can see the tier 4 gatherer which is the gamekeeper if I put a tier 4 book 132.5% right so he's not bringing back 100% because he's not tier 5 yet 150% but the tier 4 leather that he's producing back can be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 to explain what they are if you look this is not leather Oops. if you look at leather this is a 0.1 leather like this is a leather 0.1 this is a 0.1 tier 5 leather 0.1 tier 4 leather the reason you want to have tier 4 and above for most of your gatherers is because they can produce these back and can they can produce even the rarest of leathers or rarest of resources so yeah go for it do that same thing on the other guy that guy on the back he will produce 150 percent he is gonna produce 72 out of these 72 any of these can become so all of the 72 have a chance of becoming a, a rarer type of resource back all right did that also, don't forget you need beds for them. Each bed produces enough happiness from one single worker, so you need a bed for each worker. One of the reasons why you do beds. Beds, tables, then trophies if you would like. Right, I've just produced them all. Now, what you're going to have to do is, if you would like to know how to upgrade houses, you've got this little panel here. Click on it, upgrade. If you press begin, a little guy pops up on the right and you just click to add the resources. If you want to cancel it, it will not, it will destroy all of the resources that you've, been, you've placed. So make sure you don't place something in regret. Or if you do, you can just leave this guy forever here. But if you do cancel it, it just removes him. Uh, to put a laborer, this is another cool thing. You press on this, select to hire the laborer on the left side. And well, if you don't have a limit, you can put it there. Hello Silent, how's it going? Right, so let's go into, this is one of the last ones I'm going to be doing right now uh, from the laborers. I've got a guild that I run on my alt. This guild is open to anyone who would like to join. Feel free to make applications for it. Or feel free to just request me to put you on the list of people who would like to be ex like visitors. I don't really care if you're part of the guild or not. It's a guild that has absolutely no reason like to not be here used by the newcomers or by anyone who would like because what you do on a guild island and this one is in Kalian what you do on a guild island is you have access to a full on personal extra chest bank thing so this is a personal bank it's completely yours so if I put something here no one is gonna be able to take it out aside from me and I'm not you know gonna remove you from the list because I I earn nothing from not having you here and I made this to make it easy for people so if your bank in Kalyan is full and you don't have enough chests on your island or such because you can only put chests indoors unless it's special chests I would gladly give you access to this so you can have an extra bank in Kalyan and not only this but you also get access to a fully on public guild hall tier 6 which I am making every single worker here be able to do 150% on their work for a tier 5 book meaning you can put their own public you can come over here and this is this is how it looks as one of every single worker I'm gonna increase more but one of every single worker is here these are these little bags because they're all tier 2 they're shit so far but so this is what's happening their happiness I've just literally earlier today placed all of the beds made it all of the organization you have the mercenary the gamekeeper on their corner as they're only tier 2 they only give tier 2 books you can see all of them are kind of like I hopefully I didn't make a mistake they're happy with their thing they're only tier 2 so they're not getting the benefits of like necessarily higher tier trophies per se but they're here for personal use for you to buy journals and you can even buy if they're not here if, if they're gone on work you can even buy it and you can use them fully freely no problem whatsoever it's just to make sure that you can every single profession get yourself the book that you need if you know marketplace is not selling it enough and when you click on like manage you can see I, I set them to public 
you won't be able to do any changes on this, I assume. I might be wrong, but if you do, it's not a problem. I can always readjust. If I'm not mistaken, I have to add you as well, because this is not a public building. I have to add you as a v user, or the guild. So, uh, suddenly summer, I've made, this is a tutorial I'm making right now, I'm posting this on YouTube later on so you can understand what the usage of books are. But so far, for instance, the book, the usage of the book is for you to make these workers and laborers go into work and produce resources back to you from things that you've just filled the books with, right? So that's what I'm doing. All of these guys are over here. It's kind of like a little tidy and nice. And you feel free to use and abuse of these workers as you please. I'm going to be putting them to work every single day on general lists so they can grow and be better. So that's, that's what is going to happen. And uh, Devin, that's a very good question. For you to switch from tank on an expedition, you have to change your weapon. Certain weapons lock you to be a tank. So, once again, Serpent Sortier, or just contact me. Serpent Sortier is the name of the guild. Or just contact me, or just ask Fly, which is myself, or just message me on Discord, on Twitch. It doesn't really matter how you contact me. If you want access to this guild island, it's even if you want to join this guild island, uh, join the guild as well. It's a 0% tax guild. I am not charging anyone for this. It's just so you can have these things. Oh, another cool thing about the food for, like, you know, for pe for, for uh, territories to be owned, like, you see these towers that have the little flags above? They need to be owned. And when they're owned, they need food. And for them to have food, they have to be fed with food. And these foods are exactly what you produce on the back of your home plot. Therefore, there is never going to be a, like, uh, a need. It's never going to seize the need for the food resource that you produce on the back. So basically, that's it for me for today on this kind of like little guide. Hopefully it helped with the labor scenario and with everything else. Thank you so much for, you know, being here. And hopefully I'll see you guys back later on.